Hi, Scissorin here with another Path of Exile video, and this is a like curated list of the changes of the part three manifesto and me going over them and what I think. So a much shorter version than the raw upload. If you do want to see the full version, that is uploaded as well. So again, this is part three of the balance manifesto, specifically addressing auras, curses, and elemental damage over time. And everything with the three manifestos they've done has been like addressing changes and trying to fix things, and they've done a pretty good job. I feel like I, uh, out of all of them before getting into it, I feel like I wish they would do a little bit more like small changes over time. It feels to me as if JDD have like this like huge pressure on them to instantly get it right. And I think it's very hard. So whenever I see things changed in like multiple ways, which happens in this manifesto, it's very hard to get it right when you're doing, approaching things from multiple angles. So we'll see how it ends up, but uh, let's let's get into it. First off, with auras and aura stacking. Well, aura stacking, every aura in the game is gone. Aura stacking and getting like 20 auras or whatever, absolutely gone. There's gonna have to be a lot of math, which isn't my strong suit, but there's gonna have to be a lot of math and uh, how things like aura bots and stuff will work now. But um, there is now reservation efficiency, which is a new stat with diminishing returns. So it's really, really good if you're a solo player and you'll have way more access to being able to run like two auras way easier and one aura more comfortably. But running like six auras or 10 auras for your buddy is a lot harder. And rebalance across the board has been very, very changed. Um, Prism Guardian got hit a little hard in my opinion. For most sources of increased reservation efficiency, it was doubled, but like some of the uniques here only got it like 5% increased and it did need a higher value. So I'm very surprised how much of a rough treatment some of these uniques got. And yeah, some of the uniques already just, I, I'm not a huge fan of how they've treated uniques. We've also just uh, like way, way less aura effect as well. And that's been changed. So I don't know. I don't know if this entire like the aura effect thing was needed because it's already so much harder to, to run a large amount of um, auras anyway. So people being able to get some really, really strong auras, I think that's like, okay. But uh, obviously I don't have the full numbers to do, 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 but uh, aura bots and curse bots are pretty heavily nerfed. Now, I still think we'll have people playing aura bots. It'll just be very, very different. I don't think it'll be completely dead. Again, we need to see the numbers properly and, and calculating how much of a damage increase. I think the fair amount of like how much should an aura bot do, right? Should it be the same as two extra players, four extra players, six? I mean, I'm sure we all agree the number shouldn't be 20 or however many it was because it was an insane amount of damage from an aura bot, right? I think the number is somewhere between two and four. Uh, because you are like a dedicated support character, you can't play the game on your own. So obviously it should be strong in my opinion. Curse bots, even after a lot of the changes, will uh, still be very, very strong as a support. But uh, yeah, will be. I think they'll be the stronger of the two. So a lot of the curse changes is basically, um, they've changed the, the Dodri chest, which was very useful. It now has a cast speed on the totem, which I honestly, you couldn't pay me to play that build anyway for someone because just cursing with a totem just, well, uh, and now that it's not even instant, it's going to feel awful, I think. It'll still be fairly strong, and I think we will still have curse bots. Um, but it got nerfed quite a lot. Now, if you're running one or two curses for your build, that seemed to have gotten a lot of strength. It'll be much easier for you to get like 40% increased curse effect and stuff. Now, the thing about curse effect is it isn't that strong for uh, bosses anyway, right? Like curses uh, have a lot reduced effect on bosses. It's not really that important because I feel like the only thing that's kind of difficult in Path of Exile is getting enough damage for bosses because, like, you know, like the normal map monsters, they're not that hard anyway, unless you're doing like tier 16 or tier 19 delirium maps. Again, for solo play, a lot of the aura and curse changes are pretty great for the most part. It's mostly people that are playing a lot in groups that are going to be pretty upset about these. Overall, especially as a solo cell phone player, I'm, I'm very happy with a lot of these changes. I think they're really, really good. So damage over time, um, there's a lot of changes here. And before what will and chat recommended I do this as well. And the first thing you want to look at, and this should honestly be at the top. I don't know why they didn't because it's the most important thing and nothing else makes sense until you read them. But that is the elemental overload and the elemental equilibrium changes needs to be the absolute first thing you read because elemental overload, well, now it's gives specifically more hit and elemental element damage. That means that um, it doesn't increase your cold damage no matter what, right? Because it's not uh, it's not an ailment. So your cold damage over time cannot be increased with elemental overload regardless. I, I think that is a mistake, but uh, I mean, obviously they're going to be trying to compensate for that in, in other ways with damage numbers. 
Um, and it also, uh, you can no longer use a secondly rapidly hitting skill. And what this means is before we would use Orb of Storms or Stormbrand to proc elemental overload in a boss fight and, and give us more damage. Well, now the skill you're using, so for example, Armor Brand needs to be the skill critting to give itself elemental overload. So most likely if you have, let's say, elemental overload uh, in your build and you have Armageddon Brand and Cremation, they will have their own timer. So like, okay, Cremation crit, now Cremation has elemental overload for eight seconds and wow now armor brand crit now that is the elemental overload for eight seconds but they won't like share the same the elemental overload change i think is pretty good uh i think i could see that being a great thing for the game and i was surprised the damage was nerfed i was expecting to go down to 20 or 30 damage but um it's uh unnerfed so it's still at the same 40 percent uh that we're used to and uh, very very similar but again it is no longer the damage it's no longer um just damage and upgrade it's hit and ailment damage uh, and very specific to the skill so again pretty happy with the elemental overload changes elemental equilibrium so we should probably have a minute of silence for this but i don't want to like extend the minute uh in my youtube video uh honestly basically removed from the game it's now 25 percent exposure of elements not hit with removing exposure of elements you do hit with however we have so many other alternatives for exposure anyway and exposure doesn't stack if it did, like if I could get like 20% exposure here, 25% exposure here, then it might be a different story, but you can't. And since we have so many other ways of exposuring things anyway, then I think this was kind of pointless. And it's also now been moved in Ranger. So yeah, anything like, you know, if you were going to do a Righteous Fire Juggernaut or a Righteous Fire Inquisitor, you're sure as fuck not going to path over to Ranger to pick this up. In my opinion, pretty rough. And I don't really like the Elemental Equilibrium Keystone change. Um, they will have to do something for minions for sure because it's a huge chunk of the minion damage uh, unless they don't want minions dealing 200 million damage anymore at the high end. It does say we'll be looking at pure elemental minions to determine what changes are needed. They do say pure though. That does not sound like they're talking about conversion, but we'll, we'll see. It'll be interesting. Cold got a lot of damage buffs across the floor. They got somewhere from 40 to 60% uh, damage increase. It probably did need more of a 200% damage increase with EO being gone. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. Cold and, and dot skills could end up being um, very, very strong. Armor Brand obviously has a really, really good hit component. So it would be great for the new Elemental Overload where you have a regular hit and you're going to get that uh, Elemental Overload buff for the Ignite portion. So uh, obviously most skills get anywhere from a 40 to 70% Ignite skill buff uh, because most skills can't use the Elemental Overload thing. But since Ignite works so well, or sorry, the, the hit component so uh, easy, it says it received a harsher damage loss because it still works very well with Elemental Overload. And the same thing happened to Divine Ire. Now, I haven't looked at the numbers enough. This obviously just came out and we, we won't want to like look at everything in the context of the patch notes. But I still think Armor Brand could be a really, really good choice of a starter. So I'm still fairly excited about that, even though it doesn't get the same number as a lot of other um, skills are getting. Honestly, dots should be very, very strong this thing. Hi, Scissor in here. Happy to announce another Essence Strain Guide. And that is before there is a lot more sources of global damage over time multiplier now. You can now get 15% damage over time multiplier on rings with Delirium Essence. That is huge because we normally didn't have damage over time multiplier as even a source on a ring. And you can still get um, some damage over time and more importantly, gem levels on your amulet. So you're getting basically another fairly easily accessible 30% damage over time multi on rings. And yeah, just quite a lot of uh, extra like here we have up to 26% uh, global dot multi on weapons, one handers. Pretty good stuff for dot builds. It will be interesting. I don't actually play cold dot builds enough. So I'm going to ask some friends that do and see what they think about cold dots after the changes. But at least fire dots look very, very spicy. Ignite looks very, very spicy. Honestly, I personally, and the way I enjoy playing the game and just for things that affect me, I am very happy about all these changes, except for Elemental Equilibrium. I think it's a bit rash, a bit reckless. And yeah, I'm just very surprised that they I can't believe you've done this. Um, but other than that, honestly, all three manifestos overall, fairly happy. Obviously, some things in each one I wasn't happy with, but fairly happy. Pretty excited for 3.16, especially excited for the superior base types and stuff like that. More chase things like that is very cool. Imagine how exciting it will be to find a superior shape or titanium shield uh, or a base. So very, very cool. As always, we're doing Path of Exile University right now as well on my channel. And we'll have loads of content on YouTube for PeeWee. So thank you guys so much for all the support. I hope you guys are excited for 3.16. 
I would love to hear what you guys think about these changes, especially if you're one of the players that do enjoy playing with Aurobots and playing in groups or, you know, playing like a self Aurobot. Obviously, these are things that don't affect me so much, so it's not things that affect me. Thus, I am fairly happy about all these changes because I get buffed, right? But let me know if you don't. I would love to hear your guys' point of view too. Again, sub if you like the channel. Thank you so much for all the support. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.